Okay. <laughs> Welcome, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you as well. I was m missing uh, having a conversation with you, so I decided to start a whole podcast just to get uh, an opportunity to to talk to talk with you. <laughs> 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 so please, can you just start by um, giving like a short um, introduction to yourself and um, your history with BMC? Long story. Because it's uh, the story of 36 years of my life. I didn't really do anything else. My path was looking for teachers outside of the school system in the 80s. And because I left university and I needed to, to do something different than what was offered in the, the system education. And uh, I, I studied with a number of theater people and therapy, kinds of therapy, humanistic therapies that led to deeper dance education for some years, actually five years or so. I was mostly involved in dance as an exploration, as learning about it and being in it. And uh, in 1986, I for the first time met BMC Pure. I've studied with some BMC teachers before, but they were not really even calling it BMC. And then uh, in 1986, Gail Turner came to Berlin and I was ready to do something, you know, more fundamental or, or uh, solid with what I had put together in these six, seven years. And I was blown away by the quality and by the meaning the work had um, meeting it in the pure version. Three months later, I was in the training, the first big training with a hundred participants. And I was one of, well, we were in, a, it was actually an additional part of the training for people to be able to join that big group that had started in the summer of 86. So I started in the winter of 86 and then was together with a big group for 87, 88, 89. In 89, I graduated with, we were left with about 60 people. And I went straight on to practice and teach a lot in Germany and in Europe and giving lots of introductory workshops because the work was still not very well known. And also I continued assisting and doing my teacher training requirements and became a BMC teacher in 1992. And from then on, I taught in the training programs, and I also did a lot of teaching in Germany with uh, year-long training programs with not such a depth as the as the schools, School for Body Mind Centering, SPMC trainings, the one you were in and we met in. And uh, so from then on, I, I was a, a teacher and became a trainer in that isn't actually a, a title that the school uses, but when you when you train people in the program, well, you're a teacher, really, and then you become a director. You could also say, and then, and then in the teacher trainings that continued, I also became a trainer, educating the new teachers. And so that became deeper and deeper, and I became more and more senior and uh, really Lots of the BMC people out there have had some contact with me as a teacher. I helped uh, set up the training in Brazil and in the UK, and we ran the German training together till this June. Then mm -hmm. I, I left the training with uh, 63 years old. I'm now. I wanted to leave with 60, but the pandemic really made the programs last longer and because we weren't able to meet. Basically, that's in a nutshell, my involvement. Do you remember that initial contact? 
it, it seems like pretty fast you realized that this is something for you and you just went into it. But what was it that, you know, hooked you in from the beginning? What was the feeling that you received? Well, I, if I step back a little bit, mm -hmm. if you let me. Of course. Um, in the dance training I was in, it was a very cool post what's it called postmodern training with a very wild company i thought their their dancing was very very jumpy and very ecstatic and the training with them was the same and i loved it but they dropped out of the training the the teachers this was 1983 in in dusseldorf and then they were replaced by uh, two teachers, and one of them was Martha Moore. She basically repeated a class every day for half a year. It was not much changes to that class forever. And everybody who was so used to that hip hop, uh, wild dancing, mm -hmm. had a really difficult time with it, and I loved it. I was experiencing that if you go deeper and deeper with the same thing, you arrive in a much more clear experience and uh, understanding of movement. Mm -hmm. And that was a major ingredient that my search was going on through yoga and mime and theater was before, but vocal training and then meeting the actual BMC systematic approach with uh, Gail Turner there was like all my inner lamps went on and I was just, I found it. This is like answering all the questions that came up in the research before. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I landed in a, in a way of working with movement and the body that was totally or congruent with with what I was looking for, mm -hmm. and so the feeling was was that I I landed I was at home, but for instance the developmental uh, movement series was like for me such an eye opener to what ingredients movement carries. And that was so clearly researched in, in Bonnie's forming these now called basic cellular patterns. Mm -hmm. And what would you say would be the, the search? W what was your search at the time? Can you even put it in, into, into words? Uh, I, I think I, I can't really say that I know that. Mm -hmm. It was a very intuitive process right. and also uh, it, it, it involved before searching or really needing actually to find some sort of spiritual path. Mm -hmm. And so I had met my my Buddhist teacher in 1983. Mm -hmm. I was a, a Buddhist quite a while before I started BMC training. But um, here I was also, I think, looking for something that I would feel good to be involved in mm -hmm. and immerse myself totally in, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I would be, I was looking for a path for my life. And yeah, I was already dedicated to be staying with movement and movement research. Mm -hmm. But this method, this, uh, this, this way of defining and putting things together was really totally convincing to me. And then I, I went into it and maybe I went into it too, a little too much. Why do you say that? Well, one of my early theater teachers and when he saw me, I, he was living in New York and when I came by and told him, you know, I'm, I'm in the school, I'm in Massachusetts, I'm doing it fully and he said like are you gonna go for one thing now <laughs> and uh, it was uh, you know I still have that ringing in my ear why would you decide for one thing if so much is possible and mm. anyway I did and I, I don't have any 
any doubt yeah. that that was a good yeah. decision. Well, I, I feel in a way it relates to what you said earlier, how you had this one exercise that you did many times that enabled refinement. Going into one thing enables you to, to go much deeper, dig in one hole instead of, you know, digging six or seven parallel ones. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Was Moveus the first to, to do it uh, in Europe? Can you talk a little bit about the formation of Moveus and um, uh, was mm. the Germany the first place where BMC landed in, in Europe? Well, that's really not, uh, that, that's not the sequence. The sequence was that a lot of people, well, first it was me and there were a few before me also from England, Patricia Bardi and Linda Hartley, they were BMC teachers before me and they were already practicing in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. But then with me joining and then later more people ran courses and short courses, weekends and longer courses like over a year in weekends to bring, bring up the interest make the work known, you know, and it's still not known by many people mm -hmm. relative to how big our population is. And then in 1989, the first training in Europe was actually happening in, no, 1995 <clears throat> or maybe 96, I'm not sure. It, it started in Amsterdam and it started by a colleague or a Jacques van Eyden, who I studied with together in the training in the 80s. And he ran an independent program of the school. He had a contract for one training that lasted till uh, 99. But he didn't get a license to continue. Something was not totally agreed between him and the school. And so they didn't want him to run more trainings. He went on with another uh, method. And then in 2001, we started talking in Massachusetts with Len Cohen, Bonnie's husband, about a future of a program in Europe. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was Thomas Greil, Myra Avedon, Frederica Treasure, and Jens Johansson. So the four of us were we could we could do this together. I'm experienced enough now in, in 2001 to be thinking about directing. Myra Evadon was running the school for some years. She was a director, and Thomas and Federica were just about to become teachers. And so we started the program in this fantastic place in Chiemsee. Mm southern Germany, near the Alps, southwest of Munich. And that was the first program run by the school. So Jacques was doing his own thing. He was employing the, employing the people. He was the business runner. We were, at, as the Kimse program, employed by the school. Then in 2007, we graduated the program as practitioners. And then already some had started other programs in Europe. Mm -hmm. And the whole, uh, it was uh, the first, I think, was either Italy or France. And then we had discussions with Len, who was mostly responsible for the legal stuff, that we would have to, for legal reasons, we would have to call the individual organizations something different than body-mind centering. So they called themselves Leben in Italy, Soma in France. And we started in 2008 with Moveos. Mm -hmm. And uh, Good name. As, as the German <laughs> program. Yeah, <laughs> yeah strong name. <laughs> Boveus was was uh, born out of Thomas found it uh, on a train ride I think and he was looking for uh, for available web websites in connection with something that would work you know 
And then we ran from 2007 or eight, we ran, I think now is the sixth SME running that you assisted in yeah. now. And we ran through three practitioner trainings. Nice. Maybe only two, I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So when you look the transmission of the material throughout the years and the, how people react to it, do you see a progression of it? I always have the feeling that the pioneers or the people who are beginning a certain exploration, they're like entering the uncharted territory. And then as generations go by, people kind of tune in more easier into it. There's already like a set up field, a collective field where a certain work has already been um, established. Can you see that progression? Oh yeah, I can. Well, the, there is a, this the systematic way of working of going through each body system, connecting or relating or realizing that there are certain movement patterns related to or coming from or associated with the movement patterns appear when you actually work through a particular body system. And so in the beginning, the, in, the, in the programs, the, a lot of the, the, the exploration was led through, well, often it was led through the, through the quality of movement into the system. But that was often mistaken but as, as like, this kind of movement is the body system, you know, and it was my experience that we became really clear in what BMC was and what the different uh, qualities brought about and how they put a personality together. And, you know, that what, what, what is the, the ingredients of a personality and that you would, uh, find that in, in putting all these ingredients together. Mm -hmm. So the idea was never to, to take the person apart, but it could appear like that. If you were just moving through the organ system, for instance, you have a really different perception of being in the world than if you're in your bones, in your skeletal system. And you could mm -hmm. be, you know, quite displaced somehow if you were just coming out of a week long course and then going back into the world where you were somebody else before. And so at, at the end of the nineties, beginning of the two thousand, what entered the, the BMC training was the embryology, the embryology. I mean, at that time I, I was like, well, why is she doing that to us? we were just getting clear about things, you know, and I was, I got really got that teeth pulled, you know, it wasn't really, it isn't really about getting clear about anything outside of you, but it's really about being in the process of uh, structures and patterns developing and appearing and f forming and, and being a, a witness and and living in it as a as a person but not to be clear about a method it's questionable if if bmc even is a method it's like a it's an it's a journey it's an it's a it's a work of life to be living like that and so my 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 perception in in that time when the embryology more and more entered the trainings and the, the material of the trainings uh, as you have experienced already in the 2015 or so uh, already each each body system course had a had a bit or more of embryology in it so that you would would get a feeling of how the system came about, how it, how it evolved in the developmental process. For people like me who were teaching a lot and were practicing also something kind of 
coming again and repeating, but not not repeating, but uh, doing it again, it was an unlearning. And I'm really mm -hmm. thankful for that shift because it, it kind of made it all the web much bigger and much uh, wider and, you know, unending. So that changed a lot. And what also mm -hmm. changed with the time, and I guess it's because of the development in society, but also because the awareness of, of green movement, of appreciation of life that had grown in the, in the digital age to uh, people becoming more and more aware of themselves and of their process of studying yoga or other methods. And also hearing about embryology and movement uh, systems similar methods and so with time we experience as teachers that with each program the students became more experienced when they entered the training mm -hmm. and it's very uh, fascinating to to be sitting in a in a in a new circle and you you've, you've started the last circle two years ago or four years ago and you're starting at a different point every time because right. the, the participants are more advanced. It's very interesting mm. to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Is that part of a human evolution to become more aware and uh, more in tune with the body and the nature? Ask Putin. <laughs> yeah. Ask, uh, you know, if you ask me, yeah, absolutely. But if you look at the at the great picture in the world, it seems like we're still in a nutshell, in a drop. We are a few who've gone that path and uh, or, or similar paths. And I think, yes, it's, it's part of human evolution. But we have a big fallout. Yeah, I don't know more to say, but this is, I wish it was like that. But I think also the, the, the momentum of being involved in, in a life that is mostly busy with, with earning money and becoming famous or something like that, there isn't really so much space to be, um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's, it's really happening and one has to. Mm -hmm has to be more humble or patient. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it's like growing organically, but it takes time to take root and <laughs> and grow. When I finished my training in 89, I realized that my understanding of others was greatly enhanced through the work. I was yeah. I was more understanding that the thoughts, the identifications, the, the belief systems that one forms are really an ingredient of what one takes in and how one grows up and how, how one becomes who one is. And I, I thought that was a really great learning through the going so deeply through the work of, of embodying one's own life and structures to be realizing everybody goes through that. And so you, mm -hmm. you think, or I think I thought I have more of a, a well, compassion or sensation, how other, how others do it. Mm -hmm. But it's really difficult if, if people mainly run on uh, ideas and identify with with ideas so strongly that they don't actually have that personal place to to see the world from. But the the the, the view of the world is already uh, tinted in a in a certain color or a certain way of of looking at things or uh, what one views as reality. Yeah. I think mm. that there is the potential to have world peace through BMC if right. if everybody would agree that you would have to go through such a training or a, not even a training but to 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 practice like that 
the practice to to view others as the same you know right i think is the potential is is that that uh, could have you know big impact it's a, it's kind of it's a totally against also what bmc is is uh, is to be um missionary in my uh, in my perception you know there's a lot of talk uh, oh bmc is needed and the world needs it and well yeah but you can't force anybody force to to be interested i think uh, as you have experienced also i i guess it also is it takes a lot of discipline to be studying in such depth it's not just a piece of cake you know it's not it's not a given you say i want to do it but it's also like you really face your own stuff you know you you, you really if you get really mm -hmm. involved in this kind of work then you make yourself vulnerable you make yourself mm -hmm open to see your own troubles and you don't just continue you can't really force people to do that it's like a still something it takes a big effort and that effort is you know besides the money it costs right it, it takes the effort to be to look at yourself in a in a different way It's not all bad, or it's all, all punishment, or something. Or you know, ultimately, it's it's fantastic. It's really good for you, and and you come out as a clearer and more stable, and also more, mm -hmm. I think, compassionate being, person. But it really is a deep listening to to body function, to body functions that has to do how with how um, focusing works how you are able to really be in a in a situation and how you deal with that and um, that's often not the what we are used to in our patterning so to be diving into you know, when you say, is it just turning inward? And uh, no, it's not just turning inward, it's turning inward. It's it's not like um, something, oh, it's just turning. But that's like a, a sentence from yoga is uh, turn the sentence, turn the senses inward is one of the main teaching sentences in yoga. There was a time when BMC was called West Yoga. It was like a, a, a Western way of, of turning inward. But it also has some ingredients from Eastern philosophy, as uh, Wani and Len lived and studied in Japan. So meditation and contemplative practices have been part of the trainings from, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned um, your Buddhist background and interest in meditation. How would you say that the, the two approaches go together with you? Oh, very well, but I wouldn't mix them up. <laughs> it's like when I do, I try it and I don't think they really are the same. It's like when you do a Buddhist practice, whatever it is, you do that practice and when you do bmc you do bmc mm -hmm. however when you are when you are a buddhist ideally everything should be part of your practice mm -hmm. and uh, i guess when you're really in bmc it's the same so it's a little difficult to uh, take apart but still, when you do a practice with focus, then it's that practice and not the other. For instance, in a sitting meditation with a focus on the breathing, you're actually not um, focusing on uh, the 
trabeculae in the, no, what is it called? The bubbles in the lamp. You know, you, alveoli, you don't, you don't focus on the minute detail of breathing, but just on the flow of breath. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, uh, in the Vipassana uh, trainings, there is a, there is, there is a, a part of the course is that you consciously go along the, uh, the details of the body. But I don't think in such depth as BMC does. Mm. So when we focus on the body systems, or in general, any kind of, let's say, BMC exploration, I feel that the body tells us our personal stories, but it also tells us universal principles of us as beings born here on earth. In your experience or in, in the inspiration you have right now, what would you say are some of the universal lessons that the deep contact with our body and our cellular consciousness is telling us about us as a species or a life on this planet or our relationships? Well, as you say, to in my understanding and perception, the uh, the, the the study of of BMC is is always simultaneously studying one's own body, as it is studying the human body. And there's a lot of studying the human body that is also very similar to, for instance, animals' bodies. So you're connected yourself in the practice. You connect yourself with the beings uh, of the of the living environment. Also, when we do a breathing practice, we become aware of. Uh, breathing the oxygen from plants, so we really connect consciously and experientially. It's like it's really to bring that experience into the into the, the to bring those that realization into experience is kind of the key. So you're not just uh, dealing with uh, with your own with 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 your ego, with your making, you know, your your wellness, becoming and making yourself uh, more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but you also, in my perception, you're really connected with with others and with the world. I think that that is partly why the atmosphere in BMC spaces is um, often very nice. Mm -hmm. One is one is uh, open. One opens oneself to others by going in deeply, and it's quite stunning how that works on a group or on the on the mind, on the perception of the world, and on one's thoughts, on one's heart and feelings. Mm. I don't know if it, what what was the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's good. That's it. That's it. It's like that. It's uh, <laughs> what 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 were we talking about? <laughs> Do you think it's important to talk about these things? <laughs> I mean, because the part of it, it's always like untranslatable into words. It remains on a level of um, some deep feeling one has. Yeah, it it is. It's it's actually like it's a lot a lot of random random babble uh, to tell somebody. You know, why don't you embody your pericardium more? Yeah. You know, or you know, just, just like just bring out your yolk sac and you have frontal support. It's mm -hmm. You know, can't you feel your autonomic rhythm swinging back and forth? That doesn't make any sense to people who haven't, like, studied and, and put themselves into the practice. Mm -hmm. When you're in there, it's like 
you you could have a life changing experience through some simple instruction like that. Right. In that way, it's hidden and uh, somehow veiled to people who haven't practiced that. But my teaching was often include to tell people now you have a really experienced something really deeply, something very profound for yourself. Now, don't think when you go and buy your bread from the person around, around you know, on the counter, that she isn't the same. Mm -hmm. Or he, that that people without the experience, without having put themselves into the experience, own or are uh, of the same. They are not like minor. I feel like one has to be be careful with becoming arrogant with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, not that maybe that's my problem. But uh, I think uh, it's just a, a good advice to be, you know, a lot of the stuff we we learn is really what a frog can do, right? Is or how a how a little animal uh, develops. You know, it's not wow, wow we are so involved, evolve, mm -hmm. but it's more just looking into the wonder of it. Mm -hmm. I guess also that's really where um, where this time and this this uh, this living is is lacking the ability to be in wonder. Right. It is. It is like opening to the breathing of cells. Is like entering a wonder, mm -hmm. but it's happening in each frog. It's not uh, the, the it's not lifting yourself on a pedestal ab above anybody else, but entering being able to use the human awareness or consciousness to be realizing and entering the wonder that is inside. Mm -hmm. But that wonder isn't only human, but it's really uh, universal in, in life. You know. We just seem to have the the possibility to uh, develop awareness around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this because I would say, like, for me personally, this was the main thing that I experienced. Reminding myself about the wonder of life. If I ever forgot it... <laughs> Once I tune in back into it, it's 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 there, and it, and it's so empowering. Um, but I guess like every practice that's empowering, there's a danger of it leading to some sort of a um, sense of superiority, when in fact it's pointing out nothing but to be humble towards life seeing it in 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 everybody and everything because if i'm that then everybody's that ideally <laughs> <laughs> ideally ideally but come on really we got it and they don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's easy and then then you have a sect then you have a sect right 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 yeah. right that was often was bmc was called a sect <laughs> Can I just say one more thing before you start? And um, maybe I don't know who who is going to listen to this, mm -hmm. um, but also to to uh, to describe that the amazement that one experiences, or that I experience, experienced or experience when I realize that I have just gone to a new place of or a new level of experience seeing something in this being. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when when you discover when I discovered that to go to a developmental structure that isn't there anymore but it still exists in some of the remnants in the cells of the spinal cord. Or well, it has something to do with my 
spinal discs. It's like a real eye opener to, well, to, to who we are and how we function and how we are physically put into place kind of to, to um, how we develop. And that you can experience that is, is quite, uh, is quite different from taking it for granted. Right. And yeah. Yeah, and op opening up to the mystery of the of it all, yeah. because it's so vast. And then to find something new, like you said, it's it's um, it's fueling also further exploration. And I would say that the knowledge of 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 understanding uh, more of the details also costs a lot of time and effort. It's like you need to be interested enough to study it. Right. And then to, to study uh, in more detail, any kind of structure really is time intensive. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, you can do a, a lot of uh, smart talking about it, but if you want to go deeply into understanding something like a, a embryological developmental uh, step or time, it really takes more than just glancing at it. Right. You need to be busy with with everything of, of your capacity mm -hmm. to be um, mm -hmm. allowing that knowledge to kind of unveil itself to you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, interesting. So how would you say one should approach this embryological, would you call it a space? Or it's a memory? It's a very interesting process. It's kind of a recreation of a process, but it's happening now. Mm. So it's informing my body now as I'm doing it. But it's also a remember remembrance it's kind of like i tune in into some some mysterious flow and then it takes me and it's doing something and i'm really not even sure what it's doing but it's it's restructuring i don't so much experience it as as memory mm -hmm. i i experience it more as something happening in the moment right. and in my mind, putting it together that it is memory. Right, 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 right. Um, in the practice, in, uh, we often go from simple to complex. We start from the meeting of egg and sperm, and we go more and more complex of the formation of the, the body systems and so forth. And I really like going backwards. I really like to go from this body, from this now form, and uh, reduce it to the different stages of developmental back to the sperm and egg system as a sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of oil. I like, like uh, oiling like, the pathways. Kind of an oiling, oiling the process both ways. <laughs> It's kind of like when you learn the alphabet, then you learn it from the beginning to end and end to beginning. Let's go both ways. Nice. So you would say the BMC is a practice that one should spend time with it on, on one's own? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, take alone, um, alone the breathing practices that the, the lung breathing in in its full expanse of the, you know, the the physical ingredients, the cellular breathing, the, the uh, connecting every part of the body through breathing and every place being in, in the breathing process by itself. And then the more minute ways of breathing, like the cellular breathing or the um, the breath, no breath, 
the different ways that Bonnie gave names to. I mean, I've been dealing with an illness for four years now with a post viral syndrome, they called it, and medicine doesn't really uh, help other than pain pillars. And to me, to have this, these practices, to have this kind of ability to, to breathe, uh, have given me great relief and patience, which I really needed. So it's, it's very helpful also for, for personal health reasons, mm -hmm. you know, not just for the uh, consciousness or the, the, the ideas of the mind, but more really right, right. for one's own health, health, yeah. Mm. Yeah, just different levels to which it can be applied and used. Yeah, and I mean, the practices when you say uh, levels, to me is also the, the ability of using the hands mm -hmm. and continuing the, the understanding in the body to sharing with others on a very physical touching level to be, you really learn how you, how touch is a part of, of life, but also how touch can be helpful mm -hmm. and therapeutic potentially in sharing the, uh, the value. Do you want to end with something in particular? Have something on your mind? Oh, Let's try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi. No, I think I'm really thankful for this uh, hour. Mm, me too. And um, great you called.